Hi everyone, this is Maverick Pua, the chemistry guru. Now in this video, we want to discuss this interesting chemical test called the triiodomethane test or iodoform test used to identify certain types of alcohols and carbonyl compounds. So let's take a look at this reaction. Now let us first run through the reagents and conditions to conduct this triiodomethane test or iodoform test. The reagents and conditions will be using iodine I2 in alkaline medium NaOH aqueous with a little bit of warming and if I have a structure which gives me a positive test then the observation that we would expect would be a yellow PPT or yellow precipitate. So the next thing that we want to discuss is what is the structure that will give me a positive triiodomethane test or a positive hydroform test. Now the structure is actually very specific and it is given here. Now the two structures that will give me the positive triiodomethane test or a yellow precipitate with aldine in NaOH aqueous warm are these two structures. You notice the first guy on the left hand side you have an OH group, an alcohol functional group. The second guy on the right hand side it is actually a carbonyl compound. So let's try to scrutinize each of this structure in greater detail. Now it is actually very specific Triodomethane test actually targets this specific structure. So what I would need is this portion here. If I were to highlight these two carbons, then it is easier for us to focus our attention. So what we have is I have this two carbon that is inside this pink box. One of the carbon, it must be a methyl carbon. This must be a CH3. Then this carbon, which carries the alcohol group, it must have an OH group and a hydrogen. So the group that is outside this box, it must be an alkyl group or a hydrogen. It has to be a H or an R group. It cannot be some other functional groups. So it is very specific. This is the specific alcohol that will give me a positive triiodomethane test. It must be a CH3, CHOH group, then attached to a H or an R group. Now how about the carbonyl compound version? You notice actually it is very similar. If I were to box up these two carbons, then you will notice the pattern is essentially the same. I will have a methyl carbon, a CH3, so exactly the same as that of the alcohol version. And I need to have a carbon that contains an oxygen. In this case, it is a C double bond oxygen. What is outside this box will still be a hydrogen or an R group. It must be an alkyl group or hydrogen, cannot be some other functional group. So if I compare the similarity between these two guys, both of them will have a methyl group. So this is a CH3. This is also a CH3. Both of them will also contain a carbon that carries an oxygen. In the case of the alcohol, it must be an OH group and a hydrogen. In the case of a carbonyl compound, obviously, it will just be a C double bond O group. Even the group that is not boxed up is also important. It must be a hydrogen or an R group. Now my suggestion is we don't neglect the portion that we didn't box up. The reason why we never box up the hydrogen or an R group, it is not because it is not important. It is because during the triiodomethane test, the carbons that take part in the reaction are these two carbons that is inside the box. So let's talk about the products that is being formed. Now if I want to predict the product, it is actually fairly easy. The CH3 that is inside the box, it will be converted to the yellow precipitate triiodomethane or iodoform. So iodoform or triiodomethane, it is given as a CHI3. Essentially, this is a one carbon, which is a methane, and I have a three aldine attached to that one carbon. That's why we call this a triiodomethane, or sometimes we refer to this as an iodoform. Then for the other structure, essentially it is the same. The CH3 will be converted to CHI3. And again, this is the yellow precipitate that we will observe. Then how about the other carbon? The other carbon, what happens is actually the carbon-carbon bond will break in both instances. The other carbon, which is the blue carbon that carries the oxygen, it will be converted to salt of carboxylic acid. So this guy will be converted to the salt of acid, which is just COO minus. If I want to draw the whole structure, it will be a H or an R group. It will be a H or an R group attached to this carbon, which is converted to a salt of acid. It will be converted to a COO minus. 
So this blue carbon will be here. The carbon that carries the oxygen will be converted to salt of acid. And maybe if I were to highlight this group as well, this group that is outside the box, the hydrogen or an R group, it is actually here. So the two products that we are getting, it is the salt of carboxylic acid and CHI3 or iodoform precipitate. Then the other structure, it is effectively the same. This blue carbon, it will be converted to salt of acid. And the product is essentially the same. I will end up with a H R group bonded to a COO minus. So again, if we do some color coding, it is easier to reference the carbon that carries the oxygen converted to salt of acid. Then the hydrogen or an R group, it is here. So effectively, these are the products that will be formed when we subject these two structures to triiodomethane tests. Now, as a practice, let's go through some examples. The first one will be ethanol. Ethanol, it is a two carbon alcohol, CH3, CH2, OH. Now, remember what we need to look out for is this two structure, either this structure, CH3, CH, OH, bonded to a H or an R group, or the carbonyl compound version, CH3, C double bond O, bonded to a H or an R group. So recommended what we do is we don't try to interpret the compound in this version. We try to draw out the structure and see whether it contains either of this configuration. Of course, we should be looking out for the structure on the left-hand side because it is an alcohol functional group. So if we draw this out properly, it will look something like this. The focus should be on this carbon, right? Because this is the carbon that carries the oxygen. So I will try to expand out the bonds with respect to this blue carbon here. So if I do draw this out, CH3, then I have a CH2OH. So this will be a OH group and a two hydrogen. So this will be our ethanol, and this is the blue carbon here. Then if I compare this with this structure, you notice what we have is we need a methyl group. The methyl group is here. We need a carbon which carries the OH group and a hydrogen. Just nice, this carbon has an OH group and a hydrogen. So effectively, these two carbons are there, right? What I have is a methyl carbon and a carbon that carries an OH and a hydrogen. Now what is important is I also need to make sure that the group that is outside this box, it must be a hydrogen or an R group. So this guy is a hydrogen. So it fits this configuration nicely. We know that you give me a positive test. Then what are the products that are being formed when we subject this compound to triidomethane test is I know that the carbon-carbon bond will break. Then this methyl group will become the yellow precipitate, triidomethane, PPT. This carbon will become the salt of carboxylic acid and it is bonded to this hydrogen. So the salt of this acid will be a H bonded to a COO minus. So again, if we do some color referencing, this hydrogen is this guy here. Then the blue carbon that gets converted to salt will be this carbon here. So the two products will be HCOO minus and CHI3 precipitate. Now let us have a second example involving this guy, CH3 bracket 3, COH. This is again an alcohol, so we should be focusing on, again, this structure on the left-hand side. So the carbon that carries the oxygen is this carbon here. So we try to expand the bonds with respect to that carbon. So this carbon is attached to three methyl groups, C, and maybe I draw the OH here. I have a CH3, I have a CH3, and a CH3. So my blue carbon that carries the OH group, it is here. And again, what we need to look out for is whether this compound will contain this specific structure. So you notice I need a methyl group. The methyl group is here. I need a carbon that carries the oxygen. Actually, it looks like the carbon is here. It looks like this carbon which carries the OH group. Just nice, what the structure requires is I have a carbon that carries an OH group. Then we also notice that for this group, we actually need a hydrogen or an R group, which is outside the box. So it looks like this CH3, it is a hydrogen or an R group. But this guy, the problem is with this portion here, the methyl portion here. Why is it the case is because triidomethane test, it is very specific. It tests for a very specific structure. It must be a CH3, CHOH group. This hydrogen is important. But this hydrogen 
is not there inside this compound. What we notice is it is not a hydrogen, it is a CH3 group. So it actually doesn't really carry or contain this structure that is inside the pink box. So this compound will not give me a positive triidomethane test. Or another way to say this is if I subject this to triidomethane test, this compound will not give me a yellow precipitate. Now one more example involving ethanoic acid. Now ethanoic acid CH3COOH, again we focus on the carbon that carries the oxygen, but in this case we should be looking at the structure on the right hand side because it carries a C double bond O group. So if I focus on this carbon that carries the oxygen and I try to expand out the bond CH3, C double bond O and OH. So we compare it against this structure on the right hand side. Now I have the carbon that carries the double bond O, which is here, and I have the methyl carbon CH3, which is here. So it looks perfect, right? It looks so nice. I have this box here, just nice. It is exactly the same as that for the structure that is required, and it will give me a positive test. Now, would ethanoic acid give me a yellow precipitate? The answer is no. The reason is because this portion that we don't box up, it is still important. Some of us, when we memorize the structure that will give me a positive triidomethane test, we only focus on the two carbons that is being boxed up, and we neglect the group that is outside this box. We think that it is not important, or we think that anything goes, which is not true. Because if you notice in this case, what is required is this group that is not being boxed up, it must be an alkyl group or a hydrogen, that means either a hydrogen or a carbon. This guy here, it is an OH group. So it doesn't give me a positive triidomethane test, or it will not give me a yellow precipitate because this OH group, it is not a hydrogen or an R group. Another way to say the same thing is the functional group that will give me a positive triidomethane test is certain types of alcohols with this specific structure and certain types of carbonyl compounds with this specific structure. So carbonyl compounds only consist of aldehyde and ketones. So this acid functional group, it is a different functional group, even though it has a CH3 and a C double bond O group, but it is a different functional group. So it will give me a negative test. So it is important when we remember the structure that will give us a positive triidomethane test, remember the whole thing. It looks like a lot of portions to remember, but because if you don't remember the whole structure, or if you think that only these two carbons are important, the rest of it is not important, then we will encounter situations like this when we do carboxylic acids and acid derivatives like esters, amides. Some of us will have this wrong impression, thinking that if I have this CH3, C double bond O group bonded to something else, acid, esters, amides, some of us might think that it will give me a positive test. And of course it is wrong, and it will lead to the wrong answer when we answer questions. All right, so that was the discussion involving triidomethane tests or iodoform tests and identifying the structures that will give us a positive test. If you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.